It's finally here, part one of building Batman's armory. So for those that are new here, I recently built uh, the Batcave just behind me here for my 118th scale uh, Batmobile by Hot Wheels. After that build, I put it down to vote of uh, what I'll be building next. And obviously it's this one, building Batman's armory. But of course, in the second place came the Access Chemicals Escape scene and the uh, Bat Ski Boat Sewer scene. I will be building both of those, but obviously I'll be starting with this one because it won the votes. So here is the plan for this build, and it will be in three parts. So obviously on this one, on part one, I'll be using XPS foam. Uh, it was recommended to me quite, by quite a few people in the last build project, which I didn't use, uh, but I have opted to use it for this one. And I'll be building this to around about 70% of, uh, you know, of the build before moving on to part two, where I'll be taking the uh, Mezco, uh, the 112 scale uh, Mighty Keats and Batman and making some mods to it. So I'm basing the whole thing around this, obviously 112 as discussed, but there's just a few things I'd like to change. And the first one being is the head. So I would like to display the head or the figure as like an empty suit, like it's just in the vault ready to be put on, I guess. So I'm gonna take a casting off the head and then once that's cast, I'm going to remove the like the mouth area and the eyes and hollow out basically the, the interior of the head and then obviously painting up and the, using it like that in the vault. I think it'll look pretty good. And also the cape. So there's nothing particularly wrong with the Mezco cape. It's just, um, yeah, the material's quite thin thick for the uh, for the figure. I mean it's very nicely made but I really wanted to drape down more so I'm going to be making my own custom cape for this. I'm going to use this cape or the cape that comes with this as a template and I'm going to make it just a bit longer because it's I think it's a bit too short and that's why it wants to spring up like a half opened umbrella. And then finally for part three it will be finishing off the build so uh, painting and of course building the vault itself uh, quite, a, quite a few bits and pieces that I need to make from that, so I think that'll be a really good part of the project. And obviously the Mezco figure comes with a bunch of accessories which I will be displaying inside the door, just like in the film itself. But anyway, let's get this underway. So I'll be starting with the XPS foam and building everything up. So here we go, part one of this building a Batman's armory. So as you can see, I've got the XPS foam here. So I'm just uh, measuring things out to the correct size. So basically, I'm gonna use two pieces and uh, glue them together. I was just using uh, the figure there just for a point of reference so I knew where things were going. But uh, yeah, as I say, just a, a very basic sort of uh, initial measurement. So I glue these together, obviously, and the old glue glance back out again. I was looking to use something else, but um, I thought the glue gun would probably be the best. Um, I was thinking about using contact adhesive, but uh, I think it would have melted the uh, the foam. So the glue gun it is. So after gluing of these together, uh, I then start marking out with a pen just where things are gonna go. So I start off with the vault, sort of roughly uh, drawing out where it's gonna live. Again, using the figure there just for a reference point. And uh, yeah, just uh, basically putting down a very rough dimension. So I've done this initially at 12 centimeters, which I think is a little bit uh, too big, but I can adjust that later on. And then I add in there, there will be some more, more rocks going over there eventually, but uh, that's how I've done it for now. And then I'm uh, just drawing out just a rough outline for rocks there, just so I know how far I want them to come forward. And then the bit I'm drawing there, I'll come back to a bit later. So now it's time to start uh, making the rocks. So last time in the build, I used a mixture of materials. Um, I went with like styrofoam stuff, and uh, I also used the old classic paper mache. Both were pretty good, but uh, for this, you know, many people did suggest using SPS foam for future builds. So that's what I'm using. And I must say it is good stuff. It's very easy to work with. I mean, it is really fragile, it's just the nature of the uh, of the material. So this stuff, I did shop around. This is quite thin, 
Uh, so obviously it's going to take quite a bit of time to build all these layers up. But uh, I think I got five square meters for about 16 pounds, which is pretty good. Other places where it's a lot thicker, maybe half an inch thick. It was like, I don't know, 15 pounds per square meter. So I chose this just because there's loads of it. And uh, you know, if I do make any errors, then there's plenty of spares. So I start off just by marking out the rough sort of bottom half of the uh, rock face and uh, sticking various pieces in, just trying to bulk out as best I can. Also, bulking out will make this structure more rigid and solid because I will be covering this up a bit later on. But as you can see, just uh, cutting things to shape and size and fill them in. So with this, I wanted it to be fairly flat at the bottom and then bulk out as it goes upwards. And uh, this did take quite a while. I must have spent, well, I just over two days basically. And I probably spent about three hours. So yeah, about six hours all together to get this uh, all built up, getting pieces to fit and, and all that. I was being quite choosy on the uh, on which pieces I wanted to do. So obviously I didn't want to you know, have big pieces on top of small pieces. So I was trying to make the bottom of the rock face as big as I could so I could then fit smaller pieces on. But I did spend a lot of time just cutting pieces to size, making it a bit more random looking. Because uh, when you do cover this up, it's quite important, you know, that this does flow correctly. Otherwise, it's just going to have weird things sticking out. We don't want them sticking out. As you can see there, I do trim like the edges off of some pieces just to give it a bit more of a rough, rugged look. Not that I matter too much when I put the next material on, but I think it looks good anyway. So continue around to towards the back. So uh, this piece again is quite important because this will run alongside the uh, the vault itself. So uh, again, using pieces as reference points for later on in the build, which will help me out a lot. And then just trying to get everything sort of built up so this piece I'm doing now I uh, that's I repeat this process now for the full height of this build just because I don't want to spend a lot of time cutting off pieces and making them fit so uh, yeah I can't afford to using the same length piece for the back anyway would be useful plus it will add as a backbone because obviously as already mentioned this stuff is really really sort of fragile delicate to work with so uh the stronger I make it, the better, really. So yeah, I do end up doing a lot of these. So fortunately, I did buy enough of the old XPS foam. So you probably can't tell, but I've been working on this probably for about, probably about two hours um, up to this point anyway. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's very time consuming, but it was quite enjoyable actually, just uh, trying to get this to look the way I wanted it to look. The pieces I'm putting on now, I'm on the, uh, right hand side uh i'm trying to mimic that as best i can as from the film it has like this rock that sort of comes around to the uh well i'll write a little bit which will look quite nice next to the vault and now i'm sort of getting things ready for the back piece so uh these pieces i'm putting on now is pretty much going to be the bottom of the flat pieces that i'm doing and then these round pieces I'm putting on marks out the vertical face that will start going up. It will make a bit more sense in a moment. Okay, so a little bit of a live update as I'm building this. So as you can see, uh, I've just added this sort of big section of a uh, wall there. Sort of roughly shaped it so I want it because I need to know because obviously this part will uh, go over the top of the vault. So what I've done is angle that up a bit more, as you can see. I've just done a very basic sort of rough size of how big the uh, vault's going to be and where it's going to sit, which is, which is roughly about there. So I want the uh, you know the rocks to go over the top. As I say, just a bit rough size. It's not exactly, but just so I, I know how tall this thing needs to be. Because every time I was putting the figure there for reference. It was never big enough, so uh, yeah, so I'll probably do two more. So I think they come around here. They'll look quite nice, I reckon. And then I'll have the rocks sort of cascading down here, bulking it out, and uh, that will be the rocks done. And then I can move on to uh, the vault. Okay, so now I'm putting these last two pieces on, which will stick out a bit further than the rest. 
and then I want to cap it off. So I'm going to use you know just thinner pieces, just shape them off a little bit, and um, yeah, just to make it the top a bit more rounded because I don't want a flat top, obviously. So I just place a few more thinner sections on top just to finish it off. Right in here, I've cut out uh, like a template basically, and um, I've cut out these triangles so it's to help me shape these rocks as glued on. And I'm just going to trim off just a little bit of the edge there, just because it's sticking out a bit too much. Yeah, I'm just using it as a template to help me build these rocks up because I wanted some sort of guide. I didn't want it too random. I wanted it to be you know, to look fairly natural, but. Uh, You'll see what I mean in just a moment. So I start sticking these on. So this is the beginning of the bottom vertical section going up. And as you can see there, I uh, on this on the bottom section I stack them up, and for the top section I do the opposite. I do them vertically, and it worked out all right. It it pretty much did what I wanted it to do. If I didn't have a template, I think it'd have been a bit more awkward. Well, not, you know, it just would have been more difficult to get the correct shapes and sizes for things. Just another little update. So, uh, as you can see, I've done like the top piece, the overhang, and then I'll be working on, along this bit. So the plan is, so I'm gonna bulk out these sections, which I've already done, and then I'm gonna join them together just with random sort of rock shapes. Uh, it looks a bit sort of weird at the moment, but when I do cover it up, uh, yeah, it should look all right. So uh, yeah, the plan for now is just to bulk all this out and then we can cover it in the next material. So there we are, as you can see, or oh, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, yeah, I do the top sections, uh, they're sort of stacked up vertically rather than uh, one on top of each other, like on the bottom section. And the shaping is pretty much how I want it to be and yeah, it looks pretty good, I think. It's a shame that I have to cover all this up and, uh, you know, get rid of all this nice sort of uh, random shapes I've done. But, you know, we need these look like rocks and, uh, yeah, I think we're doing a good job so far. So now it's just about finishing this off. So there's just a few more gaps I want to fill, make sure that there were some peaks and some troughs. Same with this, on this uh, flat section here, it just needed a bit more just to set it off a bit. It was just too flat. So uh, that's where we're up to thus far. But now it's time to move on to the final stage of part one. Right, so that's all the XPS foam pretty much done now. As you can see, I have been building up the areas as already said, and uh, it's pretty much where I want it to be because I'm about to use the next material. Now, as you know, in my last build, I used clay, which, you know, it had its uh, good and bad points. The bad points being, you know, it did crack. But I do still have quite a bit of it left. So, I'm using the clay again to cover the foam. Now, obviously, this is very, very delicate stuff, which is why I've really bulked this out. I mean, it's, very sturdy now because it's all glued together so it should hold quite nicely um, but yeah have to be very careful still so the plan is now I'm going to remove all the cobwebs that you can probably see there trim a few bits off and then uh, I'll apply some glue and then layer on the clay so the plan is I'm going to future proof this so I'm gonna be keeping some of this uh, sort of bits on the side here because I want to add in the sort of mezzanine level where the back computer is at some point in the future. Cause, you know, because they're, they're virtually next door to each other. I mean, we'll have to use a bit of artistic license, you know, it has to be a lot closer than it actually is in the film. But I think it'll be a nice addition to have, uh, you know, the bat vault and armory section next door to the uh, back computer. So that's the plan. Also, along here, uh, you can probably see why it's drawn out should be a walkway that obviously goes off towards the Batmobile. I'll add that again later when I do the other bit, you know, the back computer side. Uh, it looked quite nice for a short piece of gangway going off. And this overhang part, as you can see there, I've got my rough template of the size that the uh, vault will be. I'll probably have it back a little bit further than I originally planned, probably about there. 
So uh, the overhang will come along there quite nicely. And then uh, obviously the bolt will just sit there. So I'll stop whittering on and uh, yeah, let's tidy this up and start putting the clay on. Yes, we're back to the clay. So basically I had about two and a half blocks left from the last build and it just seemed like a good enough material to use, uh, you know, for this particular project as well, even though I'm putting a lot of weight onto this, you know, well, it's about a kilos worth on there or, you know, two and a bit pounds. So it should hold up quite nicely. But this time I'm gonna smother everything in uh, PVA glue just so it will stick to it. Because obviously there's a lot of cracks and crevices that I want the clay to fit into. So it, you know, having the glue there will help it, uh, you know, stick to it. Because obviously the XPS foam is quite a slippery uh, material anyway. So just getting everything covered up. These side pieces are a bit tricky because um, where I've been cutting it and exposed the sort of more foamy part, it was just soaking in straight away. Um, but yeah, I'm just covering everything up going around the sides because I want the clay to sort of wrap around to give it a bit more uh, protection. And now it's time to put on the clay. So this is a sort of make or break to whether what I've done is going to look like rocks or not. So I've done it differently from the last one because on the last one I didn't have anything to go off. I was literally, uh, you know, either rolling or uh, shaping the clay myself and, put, you know, just placing it on. This time, Obviously, I've got the XPS foam to uh, do all the shaping for me. So that six hours of uh, doing all that work should now pay off. I've rolled this out as thin as I can and placing on. And so far, I think it looks it looks pretty good. Um, I'm quite happy with, with the way it's turning out. It's just the cracking. I mean, this will crack. Um, but we'll see about that because uh, this, this will take a few days to dry and I will reassess it. But overall, this went on really nicely. The glue helped. I left the glue for an hour just to go off a bit and it seemed to really help you know, the clay to stay in place. But putting the clay on, it didn't take that long actually. I think um, looking at the video timing there, I think it's like 12 minutes, so it wasn't too bad and I have bought some new tools to help me sort of smooth things out and uh, you know just do a bit more work the clay because the plastic ones I had last time although they were pretty good you know I really want something a lot thinner I could uh, move the clay with so just come around the side here again uh, just making sure it's got the correct shape that I want and the bottom as well that's got to be really nice and tidy around there so just uh, pushing the clay in making sure it fits around there and nicely so what's left now is just uh, filling in any crevices that I've missed or where the clay sort of ripped through a little bit from the uh, the foam and just filling in this side part really and that's pretty much it And the last step, uh, well, just applying some water just to smooth things out. I did start with a brush, but uh, it was a little bit too rough, even though I was using quite a soft brush. Uh, I ended up just wetting my hands and just using my fingers just to uh, smooth out areas. Obviously, there's uh, various joins that I need to uh, smooth over where two pieces of clay meet. So it's just a case of just rubbing this all down, and hopefully, this should. Um, well, it won't stop the cracking, but it'll certainly um, slow down the cracking and get a good finish. But uh, we'll see how it turns out. Right, so there we go. Part one of this build complete. So, uh, obviously, to put the clay on, uh, that is going to crack, you know, as it dries out. But, you know, I'll just patch it up as and when. But I think it's turned out more or less as I was expecting. Uh, I was hoping to uh, follow the still image there a bit more closely but uh yeah i, I decided to uh, well this bit's more or less right but uh, this section here is probably a bit out but it doesn't matter so much something else i'll be doing part three as well is adding a base to this uh it was easier just to work with this without a base but uh, i think moving forward 
stop this from breaking I will add a base on and obviously you know this is a bit heavy this side so uh, in case it falls over or wants to pull away from the I mean I don't think it will pull away it's it's you know it's quite a rigid uh, structure so it should be fine uh, so yeah that's where we are so thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'm probably going to do these about two weeks uh, apart from each other. So you'll spec part two in about two weeks time. And until the next time, I'll see you later. It's Matt in the retro room. Join Matt in the retro room. Watch Matt in his retro room. Subscribe for more and stay tuned.